amazing day. As you remember from last time, uh, we've got our stain and varnish put on. Uh, we've got everything else installed the way that it needs to be. Uh, so the last thing that we need to do is replace the hardware with soft close hardware so you can't slam the cabinet doors and damage the new finish. If you didn't see the video from last time, click here and it'll take you straight to it. So what I'm going to do today is go ahead and put on the new closures and I think we might be able to get started with the tile today. It took the longest time for John and I to come to an agreement on what it is that we wanted and what would look good with the new finish and the new bench, but we finally selected this. So this is Travertine, and it has the perfect mix of colors and finish and everything, and, and we think it's going to go gorgeously with this new area. So I think we're going to get into laying in the Travertine today after I get done putting it on the closure hardware. Check it out. So, it's pretty easy to see why we went through all of this effort, because rather than being able to slam one of these, right, every time you want to close it, it'll soft close on its own, you won't damage the finish. This is one that we've got to take a little special care of, because we want to make sure that this self seals as soon as you turn that on, so we're going to add a little bit of insulation before we finally screw this one down. have been completely installed and they are absolutely amazing. You can't slam them anymore so you can't destroy all the hard work that we put into it. Uh, this is all going so incredibly well. I'm so excited. So of course something had to go wrong and what has gone wrong today is that our order for tile has either been lost or just straight up not fulfilled. We can't quite tell and it's been incredibly irritating. So instead of worrying about where my tile is and whether or not I'm going to be able to get it, uh, I'm going to focus on doing something productive, and I'm going to skip straight ahead to installing the electrics. Um, this here is about the area where we're going to put in a control panel for everything all up in here, all up in here. Uh, we'll be cutting out the wall, I'll be putting in a bank of switches, I'll run some stuff under here, and I'll explain it as I go, but basically everything needs its own switch for while we're working on it. So the lights, the polisher, the ultrasonic, the heat for the ultrasonic, so on and so forth. Um, and I want to make sure that everything is run to its own breaker in the back panel. So we'll have a dedicated work area breaker from now on. Uh, let's tackle that. So I'm going to start by installing a box in this wall. Um, and I wish I had something more scientific to do other than just sort of cut until I find the stud that I want. But I'm reasonably certain I know where it is. Uh, I measured off that wall, so there should be a stud there. These are 16 on center, which we know from when we opened up the other wall to put in the venting. So hopefully I can do math, although, again, we're Georgia educated, so I'm not holding out. Let's find out, though. All right, so you can hear John up in the ceiling behind me. He's installing the venting tube that'll run from the polisher exhaust in the wall all the way to outside. So anything that is truly dangerous that somehow manages to make it past the medical grade filter goes outside instead of just like up in the ceiling. Uh, what I've got here is a hole in a wall. Uh, it'll fit one of these boxes, right? Fits just boop, right in there, right? Uh, this will hold switches and there's one down below that will hold outlets. So it'll be super fun having to wire everything up, but it shouldn't be horrendously difficult. If you see, get up close, you can see this here, this little tab, right? Um, that is just a, a joiner brass tab that actually connects the two slots on the inside of this. So you can see I've cut the one on the other side, which will allow me to individually switch each one of these plugs. So I've got to do 12 of those down below uh, and 12 of them up top. It'll be great. Two issues. First, this is on one side of the stud. So you see these marks here? That's basically where that stud is, right? 
down below, this same cutout is moved over to the other side of the stud. So, right, but let's move this. You can see up here, there's actually a hole because these are perforated metal construction studs, which comes down under here. So I've got to run wiring in between the pair and rather than use the standard, rather than use the standard construction stuff that's really stiff and is gonna be a huge pain in my rear, what I think I'm gonna do is use this, which is an extension cord. Now I know for a fact that that extension cord by itself can handle the entire tool load pulling its maximum amperage without overheating or really getting noticeably warm. So having it run individual to each outlet shouldn't be an issue. I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and I'll take some pictures while I'm doing it. Um, check out the blog that will detail it here-ish. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Oh, um, so we come up, right, with um, all our streaks on us. So now we have to take it out. So right now I'm putting an extension to take it out. So I'm putting on this a uh, pipe that goes all the way to the outer wall so that when we turn our polisher on, it's going to take everything somewhere back there on that way. <sighs> now, I will say that a lot of this can be a little boring because it's basically home improvement with a little bit of flair thrown in. But this is one of those things that I guess you're really never going to see outside of a jewelry shop. The way that I want to wire these switches up is not particularly conducive to being one neat or two easy if you don't have the right tools. So rather than forcing and fighting and messing with wiring and stuff, I, uh, I need to get three pieces of wire, sorry, three pieces of wire on a single terminal, which it's really difficult with this particular wire that I'm using to even get two. Uh, rather than, again, continue to fight it, I went and I took it to the rolling mill and you can see I flatted that out and I flatted that out real nice. So they're nice and flat and they act more like washers than they do like wire without losing any of the conductive capacity of the wire itself. So that's one of the things I guess they're not gonna show you in Home Depot, but it makes my life so much easier. Uh, give me just a second, I'll finish this up. I'll show you what I'm doing with these switches. Eventually. All right, so you can see what I was talking about here where I've got a nexus here because this will trip over to the next switch and this is the common earth out. Whoop. Back to, there we go. Back to uh, wherever it needs to be. Meanwhile. Right there is where our out goes. So what I'm gonna do is unhook the fan that's currently there and then I'm gonna hook in the polisher exhaust. One eternity later. The ducting is done. That should keep us from breathing anything disgusting. Okay, so I've got this done, right? Four banks of three switches, right? And all of my outputs wired. So all I have to do now is wire that to ground and that to live, right? And then these are cleverly numbered, right? Left to right, one to four. And I used the same wiring scheme on the inside of here. So what that'll let me do is know which wire I'm hitting or which wire I'm cutting and which wire or which switch that wire goes to. So that'll allow me to wire the outlets the way that I want them. Problem number two. I had completely forgotten when I bought these that I bought them in a specific way. So I bought a four gang box because I could buy four, three, our, th sorry, four three switch modules to go in here, totaling 12 outputs, which is enough for everything I need and a couple of extra just in case. Uh, they don't make outlet modules that way though, so I had to get standard outlet, which means I've got a total of six outlets in two boxes rather than four switch modules in one box. So I gotta cut out another hole down there, then I can start my wiring. 20 minutes later. So I lucked out. Um, I've actually got a much easier access up top than I kind of figured that I was going to. So I'm able to run my power down the wall without too much trouble. 
And let's see if I can get this to come out correctly. Right. Whoop, 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 whoop. Ha. So that works out beautifully, right? No big deal there. I've got all of everything set up. Everything set up with wire nuts here. So all I gotta do is pop these through that hole that's up in the wall that you can't see and I'll be able to fish them out down below and life will be great. Right, so this has worked out beautifully. It is perfectly where I want it. Uh, everything's nice and, well, straight-ish. At least it appears straight. The important part is it has worked out awesome. It even worked out fantastically down below. Let's take a look. So I'm pretty sure I'm sun washed out right now because it's been a bit of a long day, but you can see we'll have one and two uh, double stack power receptacles and everything was labeled up top. So I know exactly where everything is, right? Including where my extra line is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything wired in and then I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Thousands of tears later. Well, I've created a base and I'm bolting in the uh, polisher now so that we can record it. Excited. We have our polisher bolted down now. We have our suction chamber uh, vented outside. And Mark's uh, working on wiring. Let's come down here and take a look at this. So Mark, what, uh, what are you doing down here? So I did my math precisely correctly. Remember how I've got a lead, right? And they're grouped, they're two groups of three. Right, uh, I know our Georgia educated and everything, but what that means is that I've got one and two, which correspond to banks one and two, right? So they'll be in the first box, banks two and three, or sorry, three and four, correspond to banks three and four, and they'll be in the bottom box. And you'll be able to, starting at the top, moving down, you know, down and then over, down and over, right? You'll be able to tell which outlet corresponds to which switch without having to test them. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, so the switches are wired in, and so are the power outlets, and everything's in the wall. Technically, all it needs now is a faceplate, and that's only if you want to make it look pretty. Uh, but it's kind of the moment of truth, and either this is going to work, or we're all going to die. So, figure it out. Where's the doohickey? Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Well, okay, so the tester is already in there. I forgot that happens. Uh, it works. It worked the first time. Like I knew what I was doing. Ha! That means I should be able to do this. Hang on. That's the best. Nice. That's exciting. So it's the end of the day, guys. It did take us all day, but I feel productive. Um, of course, we started with an already done finish, and we have now ended with most of our complicated power done. So everything has its own individual switch. From now on, all we've got to do is wire any device we want into its own dedicated power plug, and we don't even have to modify the device. It's the absolute best. John did all the uh, HVAC venting, so our polisher is now fully vented outside. Uh, he's even got the motor bolted in, so technically, this is already done. This is ready to go. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am. I'm still upset that the tile didn't come in today, but we talked to the tile guy, and hopefully that will be rectified so we can start laying tile tomorrow, maybe. We'll see. But it was a genuine pleasure having you with us. I uh, look forward to new stuff. There's a high-def video, and, well, sorry, not video, but photo gallery here and uh, the next video here. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments. You know, tell me how bad I did something wrong or if I did something right, tell me down in the comments. Uh, and until next time, we'll see you then.